Have you ever been in one of those toxic relationships where the other person keeps hurting you over and over and over again, but you quickly forget about all of the terrible things they've done? That's one of the main reasons why I'm really concerned that Jake Paul is manipulating Shane Dawson. is up everybody this is Chris from the rewired soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution and if you're new to my channel my channel is all about trying to help you improve your mental and emotional well-being so what I like to do I like to pull things from the YouTube community or pop culture in general and try to teach you how to improve your mental health and I've been recapping pretty much every Shane Dawson episode for this Jake Paul series so make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell and for all of you who aren't new I have an exciting announcement Zach is back and he is actually editing this video so let's give a round of applause for Zach all right, so again, quick reminder, this video is for you. So in this video, we're gonna be talking a lot about toxic relationships, and I'm also gonna dive into some brain science, okay? So before Shane started this series, when he like announced, or even when it was rumored that he was going to be doing this series on Jake Paul, a lot, a lot of his fans were worried that Shane was gonna try to make us sympathize with Jake Paul, and like, I, I don't know, that, that was really fascinating to me. I'm like, okay, you guys, like, calm down. like. Why do you have to hate somebody so, so, so much? You know, like it's just kind of an interesting thing. And as this series is going on, we're learning more about Jake Paul, and I've mentioned that I can relate to Shane in this kind of like overly empathetic way. And I'm kind of like, well, you know, he is young and he has kind of a rough childhood, even though I've mentioned that it's not an excuse. But like, as I was driving back home from Los Angeles, I got this thought, I'm like, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Jake Paul is still a pretty awful person. Like I was getting sucked into this thing too. So like, the first thing I wanna talk about is we cannot forget, we cannot forget about the Nerd City video that came out about Jake Paul right before this documentary series happened. Jake Paul is a compl complicated personality. On the one hand, Jake should be respected as an expert on social media and as a wildly successful entrepreneur. But on the other hand, Jake should be reviled for exploiting children as young as preschoolers. So for those of you who haven't seen the Nerd City video, I'm gonna link it down in the description below. But basically, like he, he shows like Jake Paul is not a good person. And there's a few main points I wanna touch on about this because it's not being discussed at all so far in this documentary series from Shane Dawson. So the first one is, is Jake Paul taking advantage of kids, right? When it comes to making money off of them. So Nerd City, I love that dude. I love that dude so much. He did a ton of research and investigation. So I'm not gonna quote everything that he did, but again, I'm gonna link down to his video. But there's actually laws that are in place to protect... Maya, Maya, quit playing with the cabinet. But yeah, there are actually laws in place that say that they cannot, they cannot overly advertise to kids on children's shows, okay? So I forgot what the exact percentages was, but you couldn't put more than a certain amount of advertisements in a kid's show because kids will like go to their parents and beg them and beg them and beg them and, and the people selling it to the kids know they can take advantage of the kids in that way. So what Nerd City did in this video, he showed like, just a, a Jake Paul video and like the percentage of the amount of advertising that Jake did in this video. And I think it was about 50%, which is absolutely bananas. That's 23 separate ad reads built into one video. Out of a 13 minute and 50 second video, nearly seven minutes of that time is devoted to advertising products, 50%. <clears throat> so yeah, it's also important to remember that Nerd City pointed out that Jake Paul is very, very aware of this. He mentioned it in news interviews that his primary audience is like eight to 10 years old. So he knows exactly what he's doing. But unfortunately, because of the way that technology progresses, there's no laws against this on YouTube. So the second thing that Nerd City pointed out is the way that they um, hopped on this trend, Jake Paul and Team 10 hopped on this trend of scaring the bejesus out of children, children who have a very hard time separating reality from fiction, and they knew this. So for those of you who don't know, if you're like me and don't follow Jake Paul, what they did, what him and Erica did was, they had killer clowns break into the house and kidnap them, and kids all around the world lost their freaking minds, okay? Yeah, they could save Jake Paul. They beat if him with a bat to death. Like, I'm so mad right now. Knowing that your favorite YouTuber might die 
It's really sad. Kids were uploading videos like, oh my God, let Jake Paul and Erica go. Oh my God. And they were freaking out, right? And like, this, this is not cool, okay? Just because I'm a big neuroscience nerd, and by the way, this isn't the neuroscience thing I was gonna talk about, but it just popped into my head. But like, this is way different than like, um, like Jimmy Kimmel or somebody doing like, oh, prank, I ate all my kids' Halloween candy. This is much, much, much different, all right? So even the thing that um, Logan Paul did where he pretended to die in front of all his, uh, uh, his kid fan base in the hotel room, like, these things are not cool. They can even be somewhat traumatic. And like, I'm not trying to like over-exaggerate this thing, but the fact that they spread this out and went on for so long, like these kids were experiencing a lot of stress because they didn't know that it was fake, all right? Now, the next thing I wanna touch on is like, and I can make an entire video about this, but I'm kind of sick and tired how people are painting Erica as this like saint. From what I've seen today, but also just in a lot of research and from what I've heard from Nick and like other people that I trust, you are kind of like the only Oh, this sounds so bad to say. But uh oh. The, well, the only hope that Jake has of a normal life. Um, and it's really funny because you're not the first person that says anything like that. And if you guys want me to make another video about this, but I've talked about it in other videos already on my Broken Picker playlist, um, but like people are acting like Erica is this like almighty savior and she's gonna save Jake Paul. And everybody says that she's so good for Jake. Like cut the crap. Erica is just as guilty as Jake Paul is when it comes to this stuff because she participated in the killer clown thing. She knows exactly what Jake's doing when it comes to marketing to children. So like, it's not like she's like steering him on this nice, like altruistic, amazing, enlightened path or something like that. All right, so like, again, I can make an entire video about that. So let me know if you would like me to do that. So here's the thing, when it comes to Shane Dawson, I don't know how the timeline matches up. I don't know if Shane started this series before or after the Nerd City video came out. I don't know if Shane Dawson saw it. I know for a fact Jake Paul saw it because the video, last time I checked, had like over half a million views. But anyways, like, so I don't necessarily fault Shane for this, but I think it's important for all of us, me and you, to realize that Jake is still doing this. Jake is still doing bad things, all right? My girlfriend and I had to stomach the last Jake Paul video because somebody said, hey, Jake Paul made a video about, you know, uh, Alyssa and then Shane being interviewed by Shane Dawson. And we watched it, by the way, to save you some time, like the first, like, 10 minutes or something, like the first 75% is a vlog, and then he jumps into the Alyssa thing, so we just skip forward to that part. Um, but anyways, at the beginning and end of that video, he shoves his merch, and this sale they have, the fan appreciation sale, he shoves it down people's throat with his awful merchandise. So today is a day of merch. $10 t-shirts, $20 sweatshirts, and $10 hats, are you kidding? No. So again, like, this is important for all of you. Like I mentioned in the intro, this is something that we all need to be aware of. Like, we forget about the terrible things that people have done. And don't get me wrong, those of you who know me, I'm a huge, huge, huge advocate for forgiveness and believing that people grow, that people change. Like, I am living proof of it. I used to be an awful person in my drug and alcohol addiction, and I have changed. I did a complete 180. But, like, it's important to realize who's changing, who's trying to change, and who isn't doing crap, right? Jake Paul is literally doing nothing, okay? So he's still that person. And I think Shane might be forgetting that or he wasn't fully aware of all of those things. And this is why Jake might be manipulating Shane. But the other two things I wanted to note real quick is we don't know, and I've seen a lot of your comments, but we don't know about the, the physical assault accusations against Alyssa, all right? We don't know for sure. But, like, what we do know for sure are the things that have been caught on camera, and something that hasn't been addressed yet, which I don't know if Alyssa will talk about it, was it was on camera, Jake Paul spitting in Alyssa Violet's face, all right? So I think it's important that we remember that. And then to call back to the Nick uh, Crompton episode, we also need to remember that 
even if the Martinez twins are lying about um, the bullying and all that stuff, like we can't forget that we have video evidence of Jake Paul saying racial slurs to these two men, all right? So like, let's like let's not forget these things. So like, I just kind of wanted to talk about that when it comes to, are we starting to over sympathize with Jake Paul? Is Shane painting him in a good light? But like, here's here's the thing that my, uh, my wonderful girlfriend and I were talking about yesterday, is that Shane is in a, in a really tricky position, all right? Because he's he's trying to make sure that Jake is on board with everything and all of that. And we know for a fact that Jake is having Shane cut certain things out. So my concern about that is Shane getting some backlash because Jake is having him cut certain things out. Like, imagine this, like, you know, if you had an investigative journalist like going to like expose some company for doing something terrible, but the company was allowed to tell them, hey, by the way, don't mention all these bad, terrible things that would make me look bad. You know what I mean? So I'm worried that Jake is having Shane cut out these things that would really like expose Jake Paul for the not so great person that he is. So, but here's the thing, like I do cut Shane some slack. Like Shane is in very, very new territory. He is being like a frontiersman when it comes to what he's doing on YouTube. But no matter what the case is, like I, I always say, there are no losses, there are only learning experiences. So if that's what's happening and Shane gets some pushback about that, I hope he grows before he does his next series and learns from this. So the last part I wanted to discuss, um, and I was gonna make a separate video, but I figured I would just toss it in here, is I got an awesome comment from one of you beautiful subscribers out there, and this subscriber is Raffaella. So she says, also, since you mentioned you're a fellow neuroscience nerd, I, I would like to point out something out in defense of Jake that I haven't seen anyone talk about. He's 21 years old, the prefrontal cortex, which is responsible for, among other things, logic, decision-making, initiative, planning, etc., fully matures around the ages of 23 to 26, depending on which journal you trust. Um, I know many would argue that the hypothalamus is the powerhouse of the brain, the four Fs, fighting, fleeing, feeding, and mating, lol. But in my opinion, the PFC and the hippocampus are the true powerhouses of the brain. I can literally go on and on about this for hours. Girl, so can I, and I agree. Prefrontal cortex, hippocampus, amygdala too. All right, so then she says, does that justify the dumb stuff he did? No. Does that justify failure to take responsibility for one's actions? Again, no. However, his PFC is still developing. The dude just needs more time to grow as a person and build character while his PFC fully matures. Those, oh, that's my two cents. Love your videos. Thank you, Raffaella. Yeah, I love it. I, I love meeting like fellow neuroscience nerds. But anyways, yeah, like this is a good point. So I've said it in other videos, like back when I was a much smaller channel, but I've mentioned it like, Kids are dumb, young people are dumb. Like that's no offense, it's just like like what Raffaello was saying, it's just the way the brain develops. So the prefrontal cortex, I talk about this a lot, this is the part of the brain that separates us from the animals and it doesn't fully mature until your 20s or early 30s. So like Raffaella said, it depends on which uh, scientific journal you look at. So I've seen some that say, you know, um, what she's saying, but like, I did want to point this out. Some journals say that the, the prefrontal cortex fully matures in females around like 25 to 28 years old and for men it's closer to early 30s. So keep that in mind real quick, all right? But anyways, yes, the prefrontal cortex is responsible for all of the things that help make us good people. So it's responsible for logical decision-making, impulse control, fear modulation, and also um, self-awareness, right? And a whole bunch of other stuff. One of my favorite, favorite, favorite neuroscientists is uh, Dr. Dan Siegel, and he has some great books about this, but he has like the nine core functions of the prefrontal cortex. I'll try to link that down in the description as well. But anyways, we have to understand that Jake's brain is still fully development, developing. And what you need to realize is when you realize what the prefrontal cortex does, it explains a lot of his behaviors, okay? Now, something that my mom mentioned in one of the videos that I did with her is, um, the way his morality and his maturity is kind of stunted, right? So he may not 
fully develop that prefrontal cortex and all of its abilities until even later than in life. You know what I mean? So again, this is an excuse. Like the thing is, is that people in Jake's life need to point these things out to him, not enable him and separate themselves from him. Again, I just want to call back to the whole Erica thing. Like I do not think Erica is this perfect angel that people are trying to paint her out to be right now. You know what I mean? But anyways, that's what I got about this. But I want to hear from all of you down in the comments below. Can you relate to what I was talking about? Like being in a toxic relationship, whether it's with a significant other or a family member where they keep doing bad things over and over to hurt you, but then you like, you forget. You get this weird amnesia about all the awful things they did. And you're like, huh, they're not that bad. Like I know this is something that a lot of addicts and alcoholics struggle with, right? Where they forget how terrible the, the last drunk or dr uh, high was. And they're like, huh, it wasn't that bad. But a lot of us do that with people too. So if you can relate to that, make sure you let me know down in the comments below, all right? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new, I'm always making videos to help you out with your mental health. Make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You help me make these mental health videos and I love you oh so much. And if you would like to join and become a patron, go ahead or click or tap right there. All right, it's only a buck. It's only a buck a month, go ahead. All right, but anyways, that's all I got. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.